taxiing out for takeoff is Mike Kelly, and Mike is flying the red and white Sonic. It's the A model Sonic, which has the training wheel at the front end of the airplane. The Sonic is a really nice little machine, good cross country. Mike has flown this thing all over the place. It's powered by a Jabiru engine. Mike Sonics, which is November 154 MK for guess what, Mike Kelly, seats two people. The airplane is equipped with a Prince P tip propeller, and the engine generates 120 horsepower, which means that you get a maximum level flight speed of 206 miles an hour. The airplane will cruise all day long at 155, and away he goes. Okay, Mike is airborne and climbing out, getting ready to do his passes. Mike, the president and head overseer of all the fun activities here at EAA 292, here comes Mike. And the next pass, you see, will be Mike doing a low speed pass. Okay, Mike took the high speed pass. And we'll see what he does next. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Okay, Mike is landing. There we go. I will grab the anatomy song. And the mighty sign X is down and rolling. Also down at the end of the runway is a Rams S6S being formed by Anders Walter. Anders is the chapter's first raised scholarship winner and graduate. He earned his private pilot license, has amassed just shy of 250 hours, and is working on his instrument 
and commercial ticket. The Rand's aircraft comes from Rand's Design, based in Hayes, Kansas. The airplane was completed and first flown in 2003. Taxiing out now is an air coupe. This particular air coupe is being flown by Bill McCoy. He is a retired uh, long haul freight pilot and he spent a good amount of time driving 747s around the planet. Bill has had this airplane for a while. An air coupe it manufactured in 1946, the year after the war was over, good year for airplanes. And on the takeoff roll now, from left to right, is Bill McCoy. Bill string along with an O200 in it. The mighty air coupe is uh, painted in military colors. The red, white, blue star stars. This particular air coupe was built in 1946. Burns about six gallons an hour. There's the air coupe. That's a high speed pass. We're stringing around at about 90 miles an hour. No juice is in. Most of it is local cruising. He likes to hop over the coast range to the coast and fly down, see what the Pacific looks like. And he likes to go over to Penn and see some buddies over there. So he uses it for just chugging around.
Here comes Wild Bill flying the mighty 701. It is not a particularly fast airplane, but that's because it was designed for use as a store machine. They call it the flying jeep. For obvious reasons, you can land the thing on a postage stamp, and with any kind of a headwind, it'll have a takeoff roll well under 100 feet. Initial rate of climb is pretty impressive. Okay, the 701 is airborne and climbing out. That airplane is equipped with an aero momentum engine manufactured in Florida. The uh, engine uh, develops 100 horsepower even and uh, is a derivative of a Suzuki car engine. Those things are as reliable as, as watch works. They run forever. And as you noticed on takeoff, it has a almost turbine-like sound to it. High revving engine, very similar to the Rotax. It is a water-cooled engine, so hiding in that cowl, there is a radiator in addition to everything else. The engine is spinning a three-blade ground-adjustable Luga propeller from Czechoslovakia. It's a really nice composite prop with a metal leading edge to protect it. Right now, the airplane is, a, we have a rather interesting rule in the EAA world. An EAA chapter cannot own and operate a flyable aircraft. As a result, the airplane was sold to the Unlimited Aircraft LLC, and it was done just for Chapter 292. The airplane is going to be resold to an owner in Missouri and the airplane will be leaving us here in just about a month for its sojourn to Missouri. Okay, here comes Wild Bill flying the mighty 701. He's turning to close base. Okay, so Bill's coming around for, on the downwind and give us an example of how slowly the airplane can fly. If, uh, if, if Bill's on his game, the airplane will be traversing across in front of us at about 30 miles an hour. The airplane took about 1,500 hours to build, and uh, that used the resources of approximately 12 young people that worked on it every Saturday for months. A couple of the kids were able to come in and work at other times. One of the builders on the airplane is Andrew Walter, who you'll see flying in a bit. Anders logged 700 hours working on this airplane. So Anders can legitimately claim a significant chunk of that airplane was put together by his hot little hands. When the airplane's in cruise, it burns about four gallons an hour. The maximum speed for the airplane is 107 miles per hour. Its cruise speed is 75. Mighty 701 is on downwind, and we'll be landing. Okay, taxi in. Bill McGoggin. Bill McLaughlin flying the Zenith CH-71, built by the youth program here at EAA Chapter 292. Thank you, Bill. Nice flight. Okay, the mermaid is taking off. That's a real, true, honest to goodness amphibian capable of landing on water and land. Its landing gear retracts into the, its structure. And here it goes. The mermaid.
Mermaid is built as a kit from Czechoslovakia. The airplane is powered by a 120 horse Jabiru engine and uh, it's just an amazing thing to, to go fly in. I, Bill gave me a ride in that thing a while ago and it is amazing when you land in the river. We went out and he has favorite spots in the Willamette. So when you land, it is just amazing. You're as a regular airplane pilot used to landing on hard surface runways. You're on final, getting ready to land in the river. The part that's kind of scary is you you swear you're about to become a waterborne lawn dart. And as once Billy really flared and we touch down and you're in the water, the water line comes up to about four inches below the door sill. So once you got slowed down to reasonable speed, you said, oh, go ahead and open the canopy. And you open up the canopy, and you can drag your fingertips in the water or stop and get out a fishing pole and do all that kind of fun stuff. Here comes Bill turning base to final in the amphibian, the mermaid. And it cruises at about 110. So when you get the gear up and flaps up, the airplane cleans up pretty well. Here he comes. It's fun to make flybys like that because, as I said, you get to make lots of noise. And Captain McCoy, excellent flying, sir, in both aircraft. Good job. And Bill's going back in the pattern for another pass. Now this is going to be the slow speed pass. Gear down, flaps down, going slow, as if you were going to land in the river. Bill's getting ready to land the mermaid and recover. Here he comes. And if you ever get a chance to go get a ride in that thing, please do. It is truly amazing.
Here goes the mighty Air Coop. Lloyd Barnes at the wheel, thundering down the runway, gathering speed. Fly, Nungar, fly! The neat thing about air coops, and a lot of the airplanes from that era, is they were designed to fill, originally the airplane was designed pre-World War II to be a safe, non-spinnable, low-accident rate airplane. Okay, the air coops on downwind, and the, the neat thing about these things, they're, they're remarkably stable aircraft, they have very high dihedral angle, and they, they, believe it or not, they ride pretty well for a very light airplane. The, uh, some of the air coops, the uh, C-model air coops, meet the light sport requirement of gross weight of 1,320 pounds, and uh, have an 85 horse engine in them, so they're in the same mix with the Cessna 150. They don't seem to me to be quite as bouncy as a 150 in the same kind of flight conditions. The big bubble canopy is kind of a, a lovely thing, although you get really, you, real quickly you get smart about always bringing a large floppy hat unless you have a desire to go bald in a hurry because they will cook you under that canopy. One of the neat things about airplanes of this category and style is that they're relatively inexpensive to operate. They're all metal airframes. Uh, some of them are fabric covered. Some of them have had the wings recovered with metal. They're low maintenance and they're good, strong little birds. Um, they're, unless they've been kept in a wet, uh, salty environment, uh, corrosion is not much of an issue with them, so they're good airplanes.
Richard and Juliet are flying uh, November 150 Romeo Juliet. high-speed pass in the, in the glass star. That's got a 180 horse engine in it, and uh, Dick and Judy fly that thing all over the place. outsmart your electronics, he's a guy to go talk to. Here is the uh, glass star going slow. Look at the amount of flap that's on that wing. The airplane really has very good uh, short and soft field capability. And in addition to being able to cruise fairly fast, you can park that thing in some remarkably short remote strips. And uh, there's a recent article in Kid Plains magazine that talks about going into some of the backcountry Idaho strips, and there's a glass star in the in the fold of all the people doing all that. And here's the landing of the glass star. Turning the Orion at the control.
it means one time I got a, the tower tells me expedite. Yeah. I forgot the tail. I should lock the tail. Okay, the mighty biplane is making its really way to the end of the runway to go 88 and uh, take a couple of young ladies for a ride. That's the right engine, very similar, same manufacturer as the folks that built the engine for the Spirit of St. Louis. That's a five-cylinder and the right engine for them was a seven. And what's so neat about these things is when they start up and rumble into life, this is what all of us really believe airplane engines ought to sound like. Okay, here comes the biplane on takeoff from the your left. The KR Challenger. And off it goes. That was the height of aviation in 1929. It didn't get any better. Just think, in another nine years, that biplane can celebrate its century birthday. But the important thing about that airplane is it's been in the Reed family since 1930 and the airplane was built in 1928. So there's some history behind that flying machine and the folks flying. For those of you who are unaware, the Reed family had an airport and flying operation in the California Bay. And Robin is a descendant of that group of folks and uh, is himself a retired pilot should be from landed. Delta. And this is what they do now for fun and games. He's given a couple of young ladies a ride in the thing. The airplane is the, the biplane has been painted in the color scheme and livery of the Ford National Air Tour, which was sponsored over the course of a few years to demonstrate the value and validity of aircraft for being used in the uh, commercial transportation getting around the country.
milling around out toward the end of the runway is the Taylor craft, and it should be up next to go. That airplane is being flown by Stacy Fierro. Stacy is a recently minted private pilot. She also is working on advanced ratings. But the cool part is the airplane was overhauled and rebuilt by uh, John and Marilyn Husser, who are letting their granddaughter Stacy fly the airplane. Stacy Fierro taking off now in the mighty tail craft. Stacy is another one of these kids that has really gotten into aviation. She recently got her private pilot's license and has been madly accruing hours. She now has over 250 hours and has been granted her instrument ticket and her commercial. So she is working on becoming a professional pilot. Good for Stacy. The airplane is powered, the, uh, the, the mighty uh, Taylor Craft, is powered by an 85 horse Continental and blisters along a cruise speed of about 95 miles an hour on a good day. The airplane stalls at about 35 and the maximum speed of the Taylor Craft, if you point it at the center of the earth for a very long time, gets up to about 140. Airplanes of this era and the Rams is the same way, uh, are not particularly fast unless you point them straight down. One of the interesting things, because the aircraft was uh, was was rebuilt uh, and restored by Stacy's grandparents, the Hussers, it's a lovely, lovely airplane. Uh, the airplane was put back into service in 2020, so it's just gotten back into flying again. The uh, instrumentation is purely classical in this airplane. It's got all the steam gauges and all the round gauge stuff, and it's a it's a nice flying machine, and here she comes. That's going fast in the Taylor Craft. The next one coming by should should be the uh, mighty Taylor Craft being formed by Stacy. The Taylor Craft in cruise burns about four and a half gallons an hour. Okay, she's going to come around the corner and give us a landing and then we should be up for our next airplane. Okay, Stacy is on the downwind. Stacy is making her way around the panel, uh, the panel, the pattern, and she'll be landing shortly. 